Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we're going to be working on the big K&T mill. We're going to be using it. i got the vertical head on it. And I'm going to show you me machining this piece of track here. I want to make it into something useful. And I've got some bushings that I need to repair for my son. And we'll be using the big handy lathe for that. So, let's get started and hope you enjoy. So on the K&T here, I've got a piece of railroad track. I've got two two pieces. This is the smaller of the two. One is on my welding bench, and then this one is usually kept, you know, inside uh, inside my other room here, where all my other machines are. And I usually will use these as anvils. But ever since I've got these, I've wished, or at least I'm going to do this to one of them. I've wished that the tops were flat. Right now, it's got really an uneven radius on the top, just standard track track geometry, I believe. But I want it to be flat and have square corners. So I'm going to be using the K&T and this 5-inch face mill to do the top. And then I'm going to switch out and use a large end mill to do the sides. And I may uh, machine a couple uh, flats on the foot. They're, everything on this thing is curved, so I can clamp it to the table. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, let me show you the setup, and we'll get started. So I could have done this on the shaper, could have done it on the surface grinder, but I decided to do it on the mill. I think this will be the quickest and really most practical way to, to machine the top of this. And really this table's not, I could set it long ways, but then again, you know, there's issues with every setup that I've tried other than this one, and it's not perfect either. But in order to, to hold on, see these are quite to sloped, and to hold on to this outside surface, I had to put some uh, large steel balls here. They're nice to have some balls in the shop. Every once in a while, you know, you need them. So I'm not going to get in a big hurry with this. I'm going to just kind of take it easy. Uh, K&T's been running really good since I've done the, uh, done the table on it. Definitely needed it. It was filthy. two and a half inches a minute and take a cut of about 30,000 just to, just to feel this out. Actually, pretty good. I mean, stuff's coming off, coming off the glue. So, um, I believe I'm gonna, I may speed this head up, speed the spindle up a bit. I'm gonna leave the feet as is. I, that that seemed okay. And, uh, the finish looks pretty good. So yeah, I think that's good. And I hate having to get an Allen wrench out to adjust my my dials. Just, I need to make some little neural knobs instead of having to you know, use a separate tool. Oil still looks clean in this machine. That's a that's a good sign. Of course, we cleaned it out pretty good, but yeah, it looks good. 
could flow both in the in the main casting and the knee. So definitely getting a good finish. This head's a little bit out of tram. The whole spindle of this is slightly, slightly twisted uh, to the left here. It's not a big deal. Still get a good finish, but uh, it's not. It's, that would make this slightly concave. It doesn't make any difference. It's flat enough for hammering on. Still got one more cut that I got to do, and, uh, and then we'll switch out to, to an end mill and I'll square up at least this back side. I may leave this side rounded. Sometimes that, that's handy to have a rounded edge to, to uh, hammer on. the holder and roughing end mill that I'm going to use for the sides. It's just a big reground uh, end mill. Then I'll go to a uh, standard end mill. But I haven't used this holder before, so I'm just cleaning up the, the taper on it. It's got some nicks and burrs and dings on it. And then I'm using my precision ground flat stones. These I got from Lance Baltzy. And then uh, the smaller set I got from Robin Renzetti. Uh, both are really nice stones. And you know, once you get a set of these, you, you wonder you know, how you that you got by without them. They definitely are great for things like this. They won't damage your machine surface, but they will remove the high spots. And, uh, and that's that's nice, because a standard stone you know, that's not really flat will just dig in everywhere. See those burrs? Or those dings? So it just takes them out.
So there's our rough surface. Man, these roughers are amazing at just uh, removing material quick. And it's an extra step to have to change them, but they'll save your standard end mills. Check that out. Turned out really nice, better than I was expecting. This stuff machines pretty well. It's, it definitely doesn't act like mild steel. I'm sure it probably isn't being railroad track, but uh, good sharp 90 here. I left that radius there. Sometimes you know, I need something that's a smoother bend than you know, sharp, sharp edge. So there we go. I was gonna put a couple flats here, but I don't think that's necessary. It'd probably just be wasting my time. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this for about a year and just never got around to it. You know, and as simple as, as this is, I know a lot of you guys use a piece of track. Um, it's extremely handy. You can take this and move this to your work. And, uh, you know, it's not like a huge anvil that's stationary. You can actually move this around and it's and it's just heavy enough to where it, it works pretty well for, for smaller stuff. So I am glad to get that, uh, get that done. Looks good.
couple of wheel spacers here. These come off of the rear wheel of my son's motorcycle. I've got two sets of wheels and tires for that bike. Both sets have the same spacers in them and they're both just completely eaten away. Uh, these have a place where a seal rides and keeps junk and debris out of the bearings and out of the axle area. And uh, the front wheel is the same, the back wheel is the same, and it's the same on both sets of wheels. So I know this is a this is a problem. Um, these are aluminum, extremely light, but uh, where the seal runs on them, they're eaten completely away. And I'm going to have to do something about this. Now I can make new ones. I have the material to make you know, new ones exactly like this, but I would quickly, I think, be in the same situation that I'm in uh, that I'm in right now with the uh, worn you know, areas for the gasket to, or the seal to ride. So what I'm going to do is take these. I'm not going to, I don't care if they're shiny or not, I'm not going to remake them. I'm going to turn down the damaged area and cap them with a piece of uh, stainless steel. So if I made these out of steel completely, they'd be extremely heavy. And uh, I think I can get away with just capping these. It'll save me a little work. I've already got a piece in the lathe. So let's go over there, let's finish it up, make our rings, and then we'll turn these down, press them on, or I may just use a, a, a retaining compound. Alright, so here's our pipe. I already got the ID turned at 27 and a half millimeter. Uh, poured it out with this. Uh, it's just a shop made. Made it with a cutter grinder, carbide, uh, micro-grain, trashed, three-quarter inch end mill is what it was. And uh, man, you can't beat a solid carbide bar, boring bar. So nice. Now I just gotta finish the outside, finish turning the outside. And uh, part off my links and the rings will be done then we'll work on the, uh, the spacers themselves and get them ready to, to accept our rings. Alright, so what I'm looking for is 1.260 uh, 1 inches or 32 millimeters on our, on our OD here. Now I'm only about uh, 10 thousandths off so I'm just going to skim this guy you know, put a little uh, cutting fluid on it. I think I'm going to use uh, probably some anchor lube on this. I'm going to try that. Let me grab it. And so this stuff really does work work well on stainless. I don't quite need that much, but you get the idea. I probably should have touched off first before I filled it with schmoo. Yeah, not too great. I'll just clean that up, that'll work. It's not that bad. Good enough. So this is parting off ring number one. It's 10 millimeters. Uh, 10 millimeter long.
and parting off stainless can be so nasty. Alright, so number two, set up here. using a little lathe to, to finish cleaning these bushings up with these spacers, whatever you want to call them. Repair rings. Right, so I need to turn my spacer down this area to 27 and a half millimeters. I just turned me a uh, an arbor to uh, to hold it, and then I'm just going to glue this on. I think that's the easy way to uh, not just heat it to get it back. Just an easy way to hold it. And that way, my outside is uh, concentric with my OD. Just let that set up for a second. I'll turn it, heat it, pull it off, and do the other. that on there. So I'm just going to use a little heat to break loose that, uh, that super glue. And there we go. So I'll just uh, use some retaining compound and slide that ring on. So clean these. We're going to use some Loctite 641. It's just a retaining compound. Put a little on both surfaces. This stuff is pretty good. It's three times more than needed, but started. Any piece of stainless pipe that I made the ring out of. Tighter than I, I like. Big arm out of the way. There we go. Good enough. There we go. I think that'll, that'll work. Good enough. Do that twice, and I'll be done. 
I guess. So I think that's it. There's the two bushings complete. You know, I think that that really turned out good, and, and it was a good compromise. We still got the the you know the low weight of an aluminum piece, but the strength and corrosion resistance of stainless steel on our on our ceiling surface. So I think that's kind of a kind of a win win. And this piece of track is now in something that I can use and get hammer something flat on if I need to. Now, next week I may or may not have a video, I'm not for sure. Uh, as a lot of you know, some of you don't, uh, the Barzi Summer Bash is coming up over at uh, Rancho Cucamonga in California. So me and the wife are going to be hopping on a plane and flying out there, hopefully to meet some of you guys. I'm really... Me and my wife both are really looking forward to it, and uh, you know, hope some of you guys uh, come up to me and you know, shake my hand um, and just introduce yourself. It's always nice to, to meet the viewers of the channel. Really appreciate, like I said, and I always say, all my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. If you'd like to help the channel, you can do that. Just share the videos, not just mine, but you know, all the creators that uh, that you enjoy watching. It it really does make a huge difference. And uh, I know I would appreciate it. If you'd like to help the channel financially, you can do that also in the link in the description of the video. You know, we're just a, you know, just like everybody else. So any help is appreciated. And I'd like to say a big thanks to the we had three guys last week that uh, chipped in some some money for my son's safety gear on his bike. And all I can say, and you know, he can say is is thank you. He's not that camera friendly. He doesn't get real comfortable on camera, but thank you from him, and uh, thank you from me. I really appreciate it. Um, that's a big deal to me. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.